Good morning. Today I'm going to talk to you about a gorgeous ceramic palette that I bought from Jackson's. If you'd like to know more about that, keep watching. Hi, I'm Alison the Pottery and Artist. Today I'm going to talk to you about a ceramic palette that I've bought from Jackson's. It's a 19 well palette and it's 33 centimetres wide, 25 centimetres high and it's about 4 centimetres deep. It's quite heavy. You wouldn't take that outside, to paint outside is a bit heavy. Uh, and it's got a great lid which keeps your paints moist for weeks. Welcome to my regular viewers and if you'd like to subscribe to me please click the little red square in the bottom right hand corner and then you'll be prompted to click a grey bell. If you click that and make sure that your device can receive YouTube mobile alerts then you'll always get my videos. I fancied getting this ceramic palette because I'm teaching a lot of watercolour courses online now and I get asked a lot of questions about which are the best palettes. For 25 years I've used a Frank Webb palette and that's a plastic one and it's a very good palette. When you brush paint on the mixing area it doesn't bead up very much like it can do on very cheap palettes from say a hobby shop but it does stain over time because a lot of watercolour paints are stainers. So I thought I would splurge and treat myself to this ceramic palette. It is expensive, it's £40 and with shipping it's about £46. I've got an affiliate link to buy this from my Amazon storefront but of course you can shop around online and see if you can get it cheaper elsewhere. If you do buy it through my affiliate link, thank you because Amazon will give me a little percentage at no cost to you. So let's have a look at this palette. I'll take the lid off. The lid also serves as an extra mixing area because you've got two whopping big mixing areas there, look as well. What I did before I went on camera, I wiped this down with some soapy water just to check there was no residual film or something on it, you know, from the manufacturing process. So it's nice and clean. As I mentioned, there's 19 wells, so plenty of room for colour, and two big mixing areas in the middle. So I'm going to put some of my new Daniel Smith paints that I'm going to be using in my uh, landscape course, which is coming in early winter. So I like to arrange my palette roughly uh, according to a colour wheel, with yellow at the top, uh, red on the side, blue on this side so we're going in a primary you know yellow red blue and then everything else in between so i'll just i'm going to squirt about a pea-sized amount of color in there this is quinothalone 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 yellow that's a mouthful isn't it then i've got this gorgeous perinone orange which just makes absolutely happy it's a perfect color for doing say you know australian outback scenes or even um you know mountains in the arch um arches national park in the usa now i've got this one which is permanent red that's a lovely color as well then rhodonite genuine this is a daniel smith prima tech color so it's an actual pigment i can't wait to try these out Links to these, by the way, will be in my um, text description of this video and they'll be through Jackson's, again, which I'm affiliated to. So this is Perylene Violet, so it's a dark, booming violet. We'll soon see how these colours look when we get to mixing them on the palette. So I've got three more. I've got a lovely green. It's a green gold, so it's... Uh, got a warmth to it and it's that sort of green you know that's a, su a summer summer fresh summer green then sleeping beauty now this actually cost a fortune it was about 21 pounds yes it's probably one of the most expensive tubes of paint i have ever bought and uh, although i tell my students not to be a sucker for a gorgeous name i am guilty of the same thing <laughs> And I had to buy it, and so this again is a Prima Tech colour. So it's a natural earth pigment, and we're going to see just that looks rather gorgeous. I love turquoise anyway, 
and that is a very interesting colour to me. And then lavender, I have to have this one too. So I'm going to pop that there. Let's try them out. Okay, I've got two jugs of water at the ready there so that I can keep my colours fresh and clean that I'm, that I'm mixing up. I hope this will stay on camera now. We can just see how it's going to go. I've got this pad here. I might have to just tip it there a bit. So I'm moistening my brush. I'm going to start with the lightest colours, you know, so that the, the paint... Uh, oh yes, that is absolutely lovely to mix up on that palette. Beautiful. It's very nice. You can see, you can see the colour on the palette and it's obviously not going to stain. Let's try the Perinone Orange now. I, If you notice, if you're a beginner watercolourist, I always go from, uh, I dip my brush in the water, I go to the colour, pick some up, and then I give it a little mush around on the palette. I don't go straight onto my paper. I'm going to go straight into there so that it might bleed. I'm going to say. So I that's the way to get water on your brush and paint on your brush. Let's try the permanent red now. Again, look at this palette. Look what it's doing. Um, it leaves the paint stay, you know, there. Can you see that? It stays there. It doesn't ball up. The more water you add, obviously, the more it will ball up. But when you use less water, it stays there. So you can see the hue really well. Let's paint that in. I just want to paint these button up to each other so that they might actually bleed and blend and give us like the impression of bands of strata in a landscape. I'm just warming up for my landscape course so I'm thinking in these terms now of play. And this is a Rhodonite uh, Genuine. This is a, if you can see that. Just zoom in on those here. Is that unusual? I'll add a bit more water to that so that it will. I just want to get some bleeding action going on here. Yeah, that's looking rather lovely. <clears throat> that reminds me of um, a lollipop we used to have in the 70s called a fab. <laughs> I'm sure my age now. So let's clean my brush, pick up some of this perylene violet. Now, this is a really booming, a real deep baritone type colour. Look at that, that is deep red, deep dark red, very gothic. How is it going to react when I put it here? There. That's looking gorgeous, isn't it? Okay, so what do we got next? Let's have a look. Let's try for our lavender colour. This is slightly opaque. You see that? A very interesting colour. Ah, so pretty. Right, let's put this one here. I'll add a little bit more water to it to encourage it to be a bit runny. Mm. And I'm giving it two strokes there just so they rinse again so that the water can get it running with the perylene violet. That's a nice mixture. Two more to go. Now we're on to my Sleeping Beauty. This is the paint I've been waiting a long time to try. And again, look at this palette. It feels like quality, actually. It feels like, you know, hear that sound? The chink of metal on ceramic, all right? And again, all um, natural elements, natural products, natural equipment. That's a gorgeous turquoise. It's got a lot of granulating quality in there. And then lastly, a green gold. This is very lovely. It's a very chlorophyll. That's what that reminds me of. Chlorophyll. Late spring colour. You know, May hedgerows. That sort of thing. And this is going to go... Oh yeah, I didn't mix that up very well. Beautifully, beautifully with that Sleeping Beauty turquoise. Oh, I think I found two lovely friends there. 
Okay, so that's the Kelalel. Just want to rinse my brush. So let's have a look at now cleaning up this palette. Okay, so I've cleaned the palette off now and I put all those extra paints in another band of colour down there and I'll be sort of chopping this up and making some lovely art cards out of that at a later date. So what do I think about this palette? Well, it is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, what I forgot to do as well was to give each paint uh, a little squirt of water just to keep them moist, give them a little film of water. I should have done it before I put each bead in the well. Actually, I like to wet the well with a few drops of water before the paint goes on and then everything stays nice and moist. So I think that's absolutely gorgeous. I'll be using this for many years to come. As I say, you know, you can, you can hear... Um, but it's uh, uh, um, ceramic. Uh, <coughs> I should have showed you the back, shouldn't I, before I filled it full of paint. If I do that quickly, Oop, there we are. It's sort of moulded in some way. But I love it, and uh, maybe you want to try one as well. So thanks for watching. <laughs>